Afternoon all. Good evening, Greg. Nice to see you. Okay, good evening, members. Councillor Nigel Smith, we can start the meeting. Thank you very much, Jane. Uh, Noswadar Croshaw, good evening and welcome. Uh, my name is Councillor Nigel Smith. I am Chair of Economy in Place Overview and Scrutiny Committee. I, confirm, I can confirm that committee officers have conducted a sound check before the meeting, so I presume that everybody can hear me loud and clear. Uh, can I welcome everybody here today? to this meeting, there will, there will be in attendance uh, committee members, non-committee members, cabinet members, and officers who will be join, joining us to help with our discussion. For those viewing the live stream stroke recording, committee members are identified by an asterisk next to their name. The meeting will be recorded and live streamed and will be available for viewing after the meeting. Should the live stream fail, the meeting will continue to record and be available through the council's website following the conclusion of the meeting. Can I remind members that the translation facility is available and to choose your language of choice? If you wish to speak, please use the raise hand function. Uh, you can also use the chat facility. Uh, all microphones will be muted. And if you have indicated that you wish to speak, you will be invited to turn on your microphone. If you leave your device for any reason during the meeting, please ensure that it is muted and that you turn off your video feed. I will now go on to the first item, which is apologies for absence. Yes, councillors Ian Jenkins, Adam Wynne and cabinet member Chris Cater. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to declarations of interest, code of local government conduct. I would like to remind members that their declaration and the nature of their declaration uh, must be given if it's a personal interest. Councillor Jeff? Yes, um, the forward work programme page 81 to consider a report on the disposal of tear prints. I happen to work for uh, tear prints leisure, so that could be sent a Declaration form, I would appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Geoffrey Corrie. Councillor Carol Beard. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, item number eight. Um, I work for one of the partners in the um, for this on uh, North Wales Tourism. So I want to declare that. If that's correct, yeah. Thank you very much. That's yeah. fine. Yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, so I presume that uh, committee will be sending out those declaration forms to both of you. Thank you for that. We now move on to item three, which is urgent matters. I'm not personally aware of any urgent matters. No, there are no urgent matters, Chair. That's good. Item four is the minutes to approve and sign as a correct record the minutes of the previous meeting, and they're on pages four to 16. Have members read the minutes? Would anybody like to move them? I'll move, yeah. Chair. I'll oh. second, Chair. Okay, so that's Councillor Abdul to move and Councillor Joan Vaughan. Uh, we'll second those minutes. If members are happy, could you please show by raising your hands? Thank you very much. I presume everybody's got their hands up by the looks of it. Thank you. We will now move on to item five, which is to receive and note the minutes of the local area forum West which are on pages 17 to 21. Uh, is Councillor Garonway Edwards online with us? Councillor, yes, he is, Chair. Hello, Garonway. You're on mute, sorry. Uh, Chair, I'd like to move those minutes. Okay. So we're gonna, we've had the recommendation that those minutes uh, are accepted. Are members happy? Could you please show? Thank you very much. Um, we'll now move on to item five, which is to receive and note the minutes of the local area forum south. And these will be presented by Councillor, well, it would have been Garfield, but I don't think he's with us this evening. 
Uh, no, Chair. Councillor Garfield has sent us apologies and Councillor Liz Roberts also. Yeah. Is there any members from the South? Councillor Gromley? Yeah, I'm happy to move the Minister of the Area for South. Okay. Do we have a seconder for that? I'll second it, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Abdul. Sorry okay, to interrupt, members. Uh, Councillor Gromley, are you a member of the um, local area forum south? Yep. Okay, but you're a cabinet member, um, oh, therefore right. not a member of this committee. So is there another member that can approve okay. the minutes? Well, um, no, we're not on the south, but if, that any, if there's any help, I, I, I am happy to uh, propose that we accept the minutes, Chair. Okay, thank you, Councillor Abdul. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Abdul. Okay. So thank remember you, members. members. Please show by raising your hand. Okay, they've been accepted. Thank you. We will now move on to item 5.3, which is to receive and note the minutes of the local area forum East. And these will be presented by Councillor Alan Hunter. I don't believe Councillor Allen is here, but I think Councillor Mark Baker, Vice Chair, are you okay. here, Mark? Chair, yeah, he's also a cabinet member. Do you want me to move that for? Yes, if, if some, yeah, yeah, if Mark's not here to present them. Yeah. yeah Councillor Michael to second. Okay. Uh, could members please show the happy for those, those minutes? That's good. They've been accepted. Thank you. And 5.4 is to receive the minutes of the local area forum central. And these will be presented by uh, Councillor James Lusted, who is with, with us this evening. I am there. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, Thank you, uh, good evening, everybody. Um, yes, as you can see on pages 30 uh, to 36 on your agenda pack uh, this evening, um, there's uh, a few things uh, that we discussed at the meeting. Um, and I guess um, you've all read them. And I can take any questions or any queries on them if, uh, if anybody has them uh, this evening. There was a couple of... Uh, items deferred to a meeting which will be happening in August, an update on the Rose Point uh, Harbour area and that's going to be coming um, in August uh, as you will see in the in the minutes tonight that the that, that has been deferred but I'm happy to take any questions and I'll try and answer them if I can, if not I will try and find out the answer for you. Okay, thank you James. Are there any questions members? Do we have a proposal that we accept those minutes? I'll move the minutes, Chair. Uh, I'll Councilor second, Chair. Uh, who was that? Councillor John uh, Roberts? Yes, I'll second. Yeah. Thank you very much. If members are happy, could you please show? That's great. Thank you very much. Those minutes have been moved. Thanks, Chair. So now we're on to 5.5, which is to receive and note the minutes of the local area forum north, which is on pages 37 to 40. Councillor Harry Savile? You're presenting these this evening? Uh, yes, I will do, Chairman. Thank you. The minutes are included with the agenda, the self-explanatory, so I'd like to propose that we note them. I'll move them. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor Carol Beard. Um, so if members are happy, could you please show by raising your hands? That's great. They've been noted as well. Thank you and approved. So we'll now move on to Item six, which is to review the forward work programme for economy in place overview and scrutiny committee. Uh, and I'll put you over to the scrutiny committee officer, uh, Dawn Hughes. Dawn. Uh, thank you, Chair. So the Economy in Place Forward Work Programme is on pages 41 to 54 of your agendas. Um, can I highlight some changes since the forward plan was last published? Um, so following the request at the last meeting, I think from Councillor Squire, um, an update on the Council's health and safety responsibilities will be provided to the Member Development Information Forum. I think that will be in September, but I'm just waiting for confirmation of the date from uh, Matthew and Peter Brown. Um, I've also updated the forward plan with reports from ERF, which now include, which will include the following. So you're considering the active travel map today, there will be a further report uh, coming back to members in November following the consultation period. 
In addition, I've included reports relating to the transfer and refurbishment of public conveniences in Abergali for the 17th of November and Conway for the 15th of December. And also, I think the committee requested a report um, a, a few meetings ago on the issues and costs main, uh, cost, uh, to maintain car parks within the county borough. So this has been now scheduled for the 22nd of September. And that's my update, uh, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, members, are you happy with the forward work programme? Or are there any comments? Could I have somebody to propose if they're happy? Councillor Philip Capper. Going to propose and a seconder. I'll second okay. it. Sir. Okay, Councillor Abdul Khan to second uh, the forward work programme. If members are happy, could they please show by raising their hands? Thank you. That's been moved by the members. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to item seven, which is um, questions to cabinet members, which I'm not sure there are any this evening. Is that correct, Dawn? There are no cabinet questions. Cabinet. Oh, sorry, I do. No questions for cabinet members. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, so we'll move on to the first agenda, uh, first item uh, report to consider, which is you might find it as item nine, but it's been brought forward to the uh, to the next position, which is to consider a report by the head of environment and roads and facilities on the following matter. The Active Travel Network Map Review, and this is going to be presented by Dullan Wynne Jones, the Traffic and Network Manager. And for your information, it's on pages 144 to 150. Dullan, good evening. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, so this evening, I'm going to present the report from the Active Travel Network Map Review. Um, and we'll be seeking recommendation that the local members engage with and promote the consultation process. So hopefully nothing too controversial there. So the summary and key points of the report are the, the active travel is a term used to describe walking and cycling for journeys to work, school, shopping and other services. The Active Travel Wales Act 2013 aims to put in place infrastructure that would allow more people who currently travel by car to walk or cycle for shorter journeys and facilitate access to public transport as part of longer just distance journeys. Now the Act of Travel Act places statutory duties on all local authorities in Wales. These include the production of maps known as existing routes maps, ERMs, and integrated network maps known as INMs or otherwise Act of Travel Network maps, which they've been recently referred to. The INM in particular shows routes which are planned for creation or improvements. In addition, the Act includes provisions for making people aware of existing and planned routes through the publication of the map and for the pop, uh, promotion of active travel as a means of transport. Now, the maps must be reviewed every three years. and This is the second review uh, since the creation of the Act. Uh, where local authorities are required to consult with the public and other stakeholders in the review of the INMs and submit their draft INM proposal, proposals to the Welsh Government for ministerial approval by the 31st of December 2021. Conway's initial uh, consultation engagement programme was launched on the 10th of May with members of the public and other stakeholders encouraged to express their thoughts on where we should develop future active travel provisions and also comment on existing routes. Now, the Active Travel Act requires local authorities to have meaningful engagement with members of the public and other stakeholders in order to identify their needs so they may be able to make walking cycling as the main mode of transport. A comprehensive engagement and communication plan has been developed which sets about the methodology and time skills for the consultation, engagement and public information releases. The consultation process has been split into two phases where the information gathered from the first phase will help form draft proposals for new or amended routes, i.e. the INM plans. The second phase will be the production, auditing and consultation of the draft network map proposals, whereas the final proposals will be presented to the scrutiny committee 
and the cabinet for approval prior to submission to the Welsh Government by the 31st of December. Now, the main actions of the two phases are phase one, which we call the commonplace website phase. Uh, as I previously mentioned, began on the 10th of May and it's running until the 25th of June, uh, which includes briefing notes for councillors, town and community councillors, member of the Senate and MPs, email invitations for two other stakeholders, messages to schools, press releases, social media messages, website messages, and also responses to, uh, the, consulta the, to the consultation process that's currently underway. Now, the second phase, uh, which runs from the 25th of June up until the 31st of December, which is the submission to the Welsh Government, includes the production of the INM draft plans, where the information gathered from the commonplace consultation along with information and feedback from other sources will form the basis of the draft INM proposal. New routes and routes where improvements have been made will be audited. Again, similar to, um, similar to the first phase, briefing notes for councillors and uh, town and community councillors, MS and MPs, email invitations to other stakeholders, messages to school, press releases, social media messages, website messages, and uh, reacting to the responses that we receive from that consultation process. Um, then we would go on to produce the second draft proposals of the INMs, where consideration would be given to the information from the consultation exercise. Additional sections, again, will be audited if necessary. And we move on then to present the pro pro proposals to the scrutiny committee for approval, and Captain, sorry, for approval before submitting it to Welsh Government for Welsh Government ministerial approval. Now, the consultation exercise uh, is slightly different from last time around, for those who remember it. The COVID restrictions have limited our options for face-to-face -face engagement. However, other platforms such as social media and web-based platforms are being utilised to their fullest potential so that meaningful consultation can be achieved. Now an additional, sorry, a notable addition to the engagement method this time round is the use of the Welsh Government's commonplace website. This website includes an interactive map so respondents can pinpoint a specific location and provide comments. The comments received from the engagement will exercise will inform decisions on the new or amended routes for the draft INM. So, you know, I'd like to take this opportunity, really, um, if you know, to provide you with a, a quick demonstration of the commonplace websites, if if you're all in agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, um, so um, is it? Can I have control? Can I just share the screen? Yes. Sh share your screen. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, okay. Okay. Is, uh, can everybody see my screen? Yes, we can. So what I've done here, just started from the beginning, really. So anyone who we can only see Google at the moment. Yeah, that, that's fine. That's fine, Chair. So I've started from the beginning here, where if you do a Google search, if you, if you want to find where the um, commonplace website is, so do a Google search. Uh, Google search, obviously other search engines are available. So active, active travel, travel Conwayan, um, where you'd see that the second one down would give you the active travel commonplace. So click on that. Where it'll take you to the commonplace uh, websites for Conway. There, there, then you click onto the view map and comments, where it provides a map of the the county and showing the, the borders and the different areas within within the county itself. And it shows there that you no know, how, how many people have already commented and where where you can look into them and see what other people decide as well. 
So it's quite easy to navigate the map if you want to move the map across, up and down. Just hold on to the to your mouse left button, where you can just drag it. And if you want to zoom in and out, either you can use the ruler on your mouse or even the plus and minus buttons on the top left there. So just as an example, um, I'll I'll use toe in because there's there aren't any or aren't many representations made here so far. So um, so if you have a look at um, Gang C Road here, where I know there's been some issues with pedestrians and lack of footways. So if I wanted to make a comment, I would have your say, press the have your say button on top there. Then just move the pin where you want to um, provide the comment on, on the location. So I'll put it on the corner there. And um, then fill in, fill in the fields really. So it's uh, Gangsi Road. Um, so you don't, don't need to do that. Um, so once once you've had the location, what so what is your connection to the place? Well, I would say I'm a visitor this time around. So visitor. So it's um, payments commenting on. So payments footpath. Um, how do I feel? Well, I'll put, put very negative about it for now. Um, so what are the issues? Um, hard to cross the road, possibly. Um, like a safe route for walking. So you can press more than one option here. So, um, you know, press as many as you like, really. Uh, it's that'll be useful for us. So, and then suggestions here of how it can be made better. Um, possibly widen the footpath if one exists. Um, slow down traffic, possibly connect payments. So as I say, you can, anything that's related to payments, I've just put there, uh, or you can put, put other where, where you can um, put anything you like, really. Then you've got the button in the, uh, in the bottom here, the purple one, which says save comments. So I'll save the comments. So this then takes you to where you submit your details. So I'll put, I'll put in my personal email and put press next. Uh, what will happen then, they'll ask for a confirmation email. Um, so, and then th there is, there is a, a additional stage after that where you put your personal details in and where you conform, conform sorry, confirm the email uh, and then the the comments then is um, uploaded to the system. So um, hopefully that has, has a whistle stop tour of the Commonplace website, which I hopefully you'll find is quite easy to navigate through and, um, and welcome any questions you have. Uh, thank you, Dylan. Um, yeah, very uh, good presentation there and thank you for that. Councillor Michael has also pointed out that this is available on the top banner on the Conway uh, webpage uh, with handy hints and uh, tips. Uh, so I'll open it up to the floor. Does any members have any questions for Dylan? Councillor Joe. Thank you, Chair. Um, hello, Dylan. Uh, we haven't met before, so it's nice to see you here. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, you know, the easiest way to, for consultation is is to make, you know, as you say, all these maps, etc. But if you go to page one four eight of your report, no, sorry, one four seven, and you look at paragraph five two, you know, you talk about all these consultations, and you make the well, Greg Robbins made the um, example of Conway, which links Escalaba Conway to Bidlonda and for residents. Where do you re-look at these routes? And can you find out 
why this particular route is not being used. You know, if, if you're saying all this consultation goes on, and obviously it did before you decided on that route, then why is it not being well used? Um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a very difficult question to answer, really. Um, as, as a local authority, um, we, as part of the Act of Travel Act as well, you know, we're, we're there really to provide these facilities for people, for them to make those choices, really. We can't, obviously, obviously we can't force people to, to use the routes. However, if they're there, at least they do have a choice to not use the car or any other motor vehicles and use cycling or walking as, as, a, as a mode of transport. You know, there, there are barriers to that, obviously. You know, some people would say the weather or topography or, or fitness. No. Um, that, but... Dylan, can I tell you why? I know why they don't use it. I was just wondering if you knew. No, I don't. No. To answer no. your question. Well, you know, you can ask local members and they probably know. And I can tell you because you can't, if you're cycling to Conway and you use the cycle path, you're taken onto the quay and then you think, oh, it's difficult to get from the quay to Budlondub to get on the cycle path down to the school. There's a missing link there that you haven't thought of? Um, well, I, most probably it, it's, it's not fair to say that we haven't thought of, but um, it is something that the, the Act of Travel network maps and, and the, the infrastructure itself and the network is, is a constantly developing um, um, you know, maps and network. So it's not something that we can build straight away and it's adding on to that network and improving it over time. So that, that's that's the key message, really, uh, when it comes to developing active travel routes. It's not that we can get it get it get it right first time. It's about improve improvements on them upon improvements. Happy with that, John. I think it's a it'd be a, a good idea for you to get your constituents to uh, join up the dots in your area so that that missing link. I think if there was more consultation, sorry, Chair, done with local members, then it would help to get these things right. Indeed. Thank you, John. Councillor Michael Smith. Uh, thanks, Chair, and thanks, Dylan, for the uh, presentation and report. Um, I just want to say that I do support the recommendation. Uh, looking on the map, we've got a lot of spaces missing in a lot of areas, so I, I encourage everyone to put their comments on there and get uh, residents to pop them on there. Um, as I mentioned in the chat, there's an, a nice share function, um, so if you have your own personal social medias and are happy to use that to get it out there, if not, you can send out an email and things. So uh, I've shared it just following this meeting just to a few people locally uh, that have already applied and said that's a good idea. So it's just getting that word out there, isn't it? So we can look at, you know, continuing phases going forward. Um, so uh, I would support the recommendation. And um, yeah, thank you. Are you proposing it, Michael? Yeah, we'll do, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Do we have a seconder for Michael's proposal? Councillor Jeff? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Pat Hebron. Thank you, Chair, and thanks still for the presentation. Um, you know, you were talking about trying to reach people in terms of the uh, stages of consultation. I noticed schools are mentioned, but the colleges aren't. Um, and as there's such a lot of, um, you know, obviously a lot of learners there and a lot of staff who work there, it would be good. I, I, are they perhaps classified as a stakeholder? I don't know, but it would, it would be a good way to reach people, younger people in particular, and a lot of staff who use cars to go to the college um, if they were involved in this consultation process and were aware of it, you, you know, you might get some information from them to build on that. I fully, 
by the way, I support this recommendation as well. Thank you, Councillor Pat. Yeah, sorry, I, I, I just just um, to, to confirm, yeah, uh, I know it is referred to as schools, but it, it is mainly police, um, educational establishments. It does cover all. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, there are a lot of young people there, and it's a good way of changing their habits for the future. Yeah. Post 16. Thank you. Councillor Harry Savile. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Dylan, I think I saw when you were showing us the Commonplace website, one of the things you could select was like a need for dropped curbs at particular locations. Um, what I wanted to know is obviously you're doing this consultation now in line with statutory requirements the Council has. Do we have an opportunity to request dropped curbs outside of this consultation period? I know there was a capital business case some years ago that looked and looked at this. I think Conway said they wouldn't provide additional dropped curbs unless there was road maintenance going on nearby. So I just wondered if that had changed and whether or not this was an opportunity to request dropped curbs anywhere. Yeah, of course, uh, of course drop curbs do form part of, you know, it's, when it comes to active travel, um, mm -hmm. it's not just about cycling, it's about walking as well. Okay. And um, the provision of drop curbs is essential. It's, a, it's an essential part of the infrastructure for walking. So you know, if if it you know if if it, if it can be highlighted as as a, a barrier to people choosing walking as a mode of transport within the active travel areas, well, you know, I'd, I'd, we'd welcome the comments on that through the Commonplace website. But going to your point for um, you know. Um, do we consider consider uh, considering a request outside the consultation? Well, the, of course we do. You know, we 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 accept any any request. To, um, but what's important is that the Act to Travel Act and and uh, does it is a platform where we can obtain grant funding to yep. make these improvements. So this is an ideal opportunity, really, to look at possibly historical problems or. Of, you know other problems where you might not instantly um, connect it to active travel, but they do sort of fall within that active travel remit as well. So it's a, I think this is an important, important opportunity for local members to highlight those problems to us. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Pat Hebron. You got your hand up again. Thank you, Chair. Um, something occurred to me um, when Councillor Harry was talking then, um, in terms of, well, not so much drop curbs, but does that include lighting as well? So if people are using, uh, you know, a, a walkway or do they're deciding to walk, would people feel secure and will there be proper lighting? Um, well, yes, where, 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 it's, where it's applicable, yes. Um, it's... It's all about really um, th th this this first phase of consultation is identifying the locations and some of the, the, the high level problems. When it comes to solutions, obviously that would come with the next stage where um, if if we put bids in for the scheme and the design process, you know, is there sufficient lighting? Obviously, lighting in in winter is can be a barrier. So, you know, we got, we got the design will try to overcome any barriers that would stop people from walking and cycling and possibly lighting would be one of them in some areas, yes. Thank you. Very interesting point there, uh, Councillor Pat. Uh, you should perhaps speak to Councillor Dave Johnson uh, from Towin. Um, he's done a scheme of uh, solar lighting uh, in Tear Prince Country Park and we've rolled that out into other areas of uh, Kimmel Bay. It's been very, very successful. And obviously, there's no uh, no ongoing running costs, which is uh, really handy. Um, just a question for Dylan. Um, with this consultation, it's, it's notoriously difficult to engage with the public. How will you prioritise which projects go forward uh, with well, what I presume will be a low number of, of um, pins dropped onto your map? Yeah, it, it, it is. It is a good, good question, and uh, it, 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 it's always a difficult one to get any right. So, get the balance right, really. It's 
you've got to remember that these are going to be draft proposals from, from all local authorities and they, they've got to have, uh, seek uh, approval from, from Welsh Government. Mm. And what Welsh Government will want to see is that there's a return to any investments made into the infrastructure in regards to where they will get the most um, people you know, making those modal shifts. So obviously the high population areas uh, most probably will be favoured against more of the rural areas, but that's not to say that you know, no rural areas will be included as well. Mm. But when it comes to the grant funding, we've got to um, prioritise which ones really uh, fit into the Welsh Government's criteria, which gives us the best chance for funding as well. So there is a bit of a, you know, um, juggling act going on there. And we, we, we've just got to just got to look at the, the figures, really, and, and which ones will give us the best returns when it comes to the grant funding. Do you, do you think it might be um, a worthy exercise to, once you've collated the initial uh, information together, to... Uh, feed that through to the local elected members. I'm just mindful of Councillor Jones' um, comments, and by doing that, they may be able to highlight whether it, whether they're a, a, a need or not as as a local representative. Yes. Well, the the phase two of the consultation will will do that because the fa this first phase is trying to get the the um, the raw data, if we call it. Yeah. Um, raw information to uh, in order for us to create those draft proposals, those maps, and then there is an opportunity then to consult on that and meaningful uh, consultation with local members and so forth, where there's an opportunity maybe to fill in the blanks, maybe something we missed, or or highlight some some of the issues that they have. That will be good. Thank you very much for that, Dylan. Uh, well, I think our final speaker is the Cabinet Member for Environment, Roads and Facilities, Councillor Ge Greg Robbins. Good evening, Greg. Good hey, evening, Nigel. Thank you for letting me speak, Chairs. As you know, I'm not a member of the committee. I uh, just wanted to reinforce some of the points made. It's like this consultation has now been open for a number of weeks, but we felt it was important to bring this report to members to help highlight it and make sure that members were fully aware of it. Because obviously emails was distributed to all members some time ago, but sometimes these things, though they're incredibly important, do get missed in the mass of everything else. And that's why we thought it was really important to flag it up at the old committee this evening. Um, the, other, the other thing is to mention to Councillor Harry, yes, if, you, if you've got drop curb requirements, please put them on the system now. It can be combined into other things we're doing. However, there have been a couple of instances where, because there are specific problems in specific areas, we have still provided them outside of active travel schemes because it was necessary and the right thing to do at the location. So just to ensure you, that does still happen. That's great. Thank you very much for that, Councillor Greg. Uh, well, members, we've had a good debate there and um, I think an excellent presentation by Dylan. Uh, we've had a proposal by Michael uh, Councillor Michael Smith and seconded by Councillor Geoffrey Corrie, which is on page 145 of our uh, paperwork this evening. And the recommendation is that the local members engage and promote the consultation process. So it's down to us. If you're happy for that, could you please? Um, are we doing a roll call, Jay? A show of hands is fine. Show of hands. A show of hands, please, members. Yeah, I think that's unanimous. Right, crack on with the work, members. There's a lot to do. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Dylan, um, for, for that presentation. We'll now move on to the next item, which is to consider a report by the Head of uh, Economy and Culture Services on the following matter, uh, which is creating the SPARC, a draft culture strategy for Conway Borough Council, 21 to 26, and approval for public consultation. This is on pages 89 to 143. Uh, Jane, who's presenting this report this evening? I think uh, Sarah E. Cobb is here, Chair. Oh, good evening, Sarah. Good evening, uh, Councillor Nigel. Thank you very much. Um, I am going to present a screen and I've been going through so many different systems. I'd forgotten how to do that. So, let's take it now. so um, can I just check that everybody can see my screen? 
Yeah. Marvelous. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, so, um, as uh, Councillor Nigel has just introduced, we are uh, we have a draft culture strategy, Craig Conway, creating the spark for 2021 to 26. Um, which I'm presenting. Um, Helen Goddard was hoping to join us tonight, um, so she may pop in, in which case I will hand over to her to continue. Um, alongside this tonight, I would like to um, just mention to members about the uh, UK City of Culture um, opportunity which has come up, which is an absolutely perfect fit with the work that we are trying to do here. So I will touch on that as well and will take questions. Um, so as members are aware, we have now um, joined a number of services together to create uh, economy and culture. Um, and this presents us with huge opportunities to deliver um, for, the, um, for the county, um, for all of our uh, business objectives. And our vision for our culture strategy, which will be one of the key documents for the new economy and culture service, is that culture creates the spark for economic growth, well-being, and connection. Um, I'm sure members will already be very aware of how impactful culture can be. And we are talking about culture in its broadest terms. So that is our, our language, that is um, sports, that is uh, going for a walk in one of our lovely parks or on our coastal areas, and that is attending um, events uh, such as the one you can see in the pictures here, going to see the opera. So um, it's, it's really broad and this cultural strategy will be looking at all of those aspects. So we've broken this down into three key things, adventurous, playful and connected. So as we're working through um, the elements of our, of our strategy, these are the things that we want to be thinking about. Um, the, uh, our, our areas become known for, um, uh, as a place for adventure, for Zitworld, for example. Um, but also we think that this can be people going on their own adventures, um, people having uh, cultural experiences. So for those of us that don't fancy hurtling down a zip wire at a million miles an hour, there's plenty of other ways to be adventurous. That might be uh, experiencing, uh, it might be experiencing an evening at the opera. That might be something really new to somebody. Um, but it does also incorporate all those adventurous things that you might have in your mind straight away when you hear that word um, of using our um, uh, great uh, uh, places around the county. Playful, we've got an image here from Van Roos when the Ice Thedford was there and the Hollywood style sign that went up that created lots of uh, conversations and talk and was really good fun and made people smile. That's what we want to do, you know, bring some joy and get people smiling. And connected, the picture here is from um, a project um, that took place a couple of years ago at uh, Bodmont Gardens called Unbind the Wing about uh, women's suffrage um, and it brought together a whole host of people um, from ourselves, the National Trust, to new writers, people performing in, in this production. So um, bringing people together is absolutely at the heart of this, um, uh, this strategy. So um, I'm going to go through the, the ways that we want to make this happen. So first of all, people, always the most important thing. Um, this will be a strategy for our county, not something that we are handing down from above, but something that we are working with all those people that uh, live and work here and, and run events and have museums and uh, uh, are interested in what happens in the area. So we're looking to... Uh, uh, put together a representative body from uh, across the county to deliver joined up projects and within that we want to deliver capacity building to support the third sector and businesses and for us as Conway to have a culture-led approach within the work that we're doing so obviously bringing our service of economy and culture together is a big step for that um, that we're thinking about culture in everything we do. Uh, we're looking at place 
for, oops, sorry, I just go back to that one. Uh, we're looking at place um, for Craig Conway and we are proposing to have some cultural launch pads. So these will be based in our key towns of um, Llanroost, Conway, Colwyn Bay and Abagala. Um, and each of these will have a, a town team who will be looking at delivering um, cultural work within their town. But this will be a hub and spoke approach. So it won't just be work happening within that town, but this will um, radiate out around the areas and uh, uh, the work will be connected to each other. So the town teams will be delivering um, in, the, in the areas around their towns, and then that will feed into the governance structure that I mentioned before uh, as a broader work across the whole county. Programme. We already have um, a very successful programme of work and events. We want an imaginative, accessible programme that enhances the cultural calendar delivering economic impact and encouraging year round tourism. So um, the, the bottom right picture here, Winterlight was a key um, example of this. Uh, the first year we were, we were fairly quiet on, on the promotion of it because we wanted to test things out and we weren't sure how things would go. As it happened between 15,000 and 20,000 people turned up on a winter night, bringing lots of people into the county to spend money in our hotels, in our shops, to see what we had to offer and to come back without doubt um, again in the future. So uh, this is what we want to encourage with the programme, lots of exciting, accessible, engaging events that bring people into the area and also great for the people that live here already. Um, so funding and delivery, um, de delivery we, we are um, going to cabinet after this. Uh, community consultation will happen between August and September and then establishing governance and finalising the resource and action plans in October to March. We have put forward a bid to the, uh, the CRF funding um, to help with that. So we have got our fingers very firmly crossed that we will have some uh, finance in place to help with that. Um, and within... Um, the culture strategy, we're also proposing to um, establish uh, ways of funding the arts. So that will be part of the governance that we establish funding methodologies to bring money into the county um, that uh, the, the uh, governance team will be working on um, and using for, for the period of this policy. And then hopefully we'll be able to start delivering properly in April, 2022. So as I mentioned, um, City of Culture, um, so that, um, I'll just stop sharing now. Um, that has come about a very fortuitous time for us. We're all um, very excited about it. Um, we have an opportunity to apply to be City of uh, Culture in 2025. Um, and um, unlike previous years, we are now able to, uh, to go in as a, as a consortium of, of towns of areas rather than just one city. Um, so um, it's really exciting that this, this change has happened. Um, we, we think that we have a really um, good shot at this. We've already got a really good reputation for running events, for, um, for engaging our communities, um, for um, being able to host some of the biggest events in, in the country, like UK Armed Forces Day, Wales Rally GB. And we've also got all sorts of amazing culture going on. And of course, we have a, our UNESCO World Heritage Site in Conway um, that would be front and central of our bid. So we're working to bring together the teams to see, uh, to join us as partners. Um, and we are pulling together an expression of interest at which we hope members uh, will be keen that we uh, go ahead with, with that. So I'm happy to take questions on that. Um, and I, uh, I think that's um, the, the, the very quick and brief overview, but very happy to take questions and give any more information. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sarah, for that presentation. Uh, members, I'm gonna open it up to the floor. Do members have any questions? Oh, Councillor Mark Baker. 
Councillor Joan as well. All right. Thank you very much, Chair, for letting me speak. Um, it's a great honour to come to scrutiny. And um, I just wanted to say that it's so exciting that we're able to bring this to you. And um, I think if we can get the City of Culture into the area, it'll be an amazing move. And um, we'll make sure that Kimmel Bay is the, the centre of everything, Councillor Nigel. So um, I just want to say thank you to all the team. Um, Sarah stepped into the breach tonight um, at last minute, which is fantastic. Um, Helen Goddard um, has put a lot of this work together as part of the, um, the cultural strategy. And um, I'm just really excited to kind of get going with things and can't wait to bring it to Cabinet. And um, Sarah said we're happy to answer any questions. So, Diochen Valian. It's very exciting, Mark. And uh, I'm really pleased that we're, we're not centralising this. We're going north, south, east and west with our communities. And it's, it's very pleasing to see that. Uh, Councillor Joan Vaughan. Sorry, I missed your hand waving previously. Sorry, that's fine, Councillor. That's fine, Chair. Um, this is one of the most exciting um, projects mm. um, that I've seen for a long, long time. Um, it really fills me with hope for the future. And of course, Conway Town has got to be the flagship here. We're the World Heritage Site. So obviously, that I'm, I'm very happy. I wondered... Um, how can how can sort of myself personally get involved in this? Is this a brochure that I can have physically so I can promote it round the town? Um, we've really got to get everybody involved in this. Um, I just don't know quite how to do that. Um, thanks, Councillor Joan, um, uh, and it's great to hear your enthusiasm, which is. Brilliant. Um, we, yes, we will be starting our consultation um, as per the, the timetable I just showed you. So absolutely, we will share materials with you and um, the more you can encourage people to engage, the better. And then um, we will be setting up the, the governance and the town teams. And if you can help um, us recruit key people to that as well, that would be great. And it's galvanizing our communities, letting our communities know that, that this is about us collectively um, bringing together this program of events, this understanding of um, what we have already and what we can achieve. So um, any, any support that you can offer with that is, oh. is gonna be very much uh, gratefully received. Very quickly, can I remind you of the um, culture, the concerts that go on in St. Mary's Church? Um, you know, there's no reference, but that that would fit this project very well. I, th I think that's a, a really good example um, of, of the fact that we have so much going on in the county and we want to pull it all together. And we want to make sure that if you live here or you're a visitor here, you can easily see all these connections. If you if you go to see. Um, an exhibition that's happening in Abagala out on the on the streets. You you also then might think, oh, there's some there's some concerts happening in the churches in Llandudno, for example. So we're pulling all that together. We have got a website that um, Anne Lloyd Williams and Helen in the culture team have managed to get funding for, and we will be putting all these events on there. So it's the start of pulling this all together to make sure it's easy to make those connections. Thank you very much. Um, next speaker is Councillor Chris Hughes. Thanks, Chair. And um, I, like Councillor Joan, uh, I, I welcome this report. It's been talked about for a long time it, uh, in the in the round about about developing a culture strategy. And I think that culture and heritage is close to the hearts of most of us who have uh, spent any long length of time here in North Wales. Uh, so I, I welcome the report and I welcome the fact the, the indication that there might be an opportunity to bid for the um, city, uh, city of Culture or whatever it, form it takes. The one concern I do have is as somebody who is um, who 
is who enjoys finding out more and more and engaging in the culture and heritage of our community. I held the, the cabinet portfolio for several years uh, uh, in a previous uh, incarnation. And um, the one concern I have is that we ha is as a local member, haven't had the opportunity to get involved and be involved in developing the Launchpad project because that se does seem really interesting and there seems to be a lot of opportunity there, but I'd l certainly like to know an awful lot more. Um, yeah, thanks, Councillor Chris. Um, so we, we're obviously we're going out to consultation, and then um, at the end of the consultation, we will uh, adjust if we need to anything um, that's within the strategy. And at that stage, we will then start working on the governance, and part of that will be the, uh, the setting up the town teams. And we will definitely be in touch with you at that stage to help with that. Happy with that, Chris? Well, as you know, as a local member, I just feel that local mem local members should be involved. And if, we're, if it's one councillor out of five or six, that to me is not engaging local members. You know, it's um, so I'm not sure how we will do that, but I do think that uh, the more people involved in this, from my perspective, the more people getting the message out there, the more people talking to people about what we're doing and about heritage and culture, the better our communities become. And if there's only one person getting the message, and then it doesn't necessarily get disseminated as it should be. So that's the only concern I have. I think that will be that, that will be the work of the town teams. I think you're absolutely right. You know, we don't want the town teams to work um, on their own and, and just be a little group of people that never share the message. So the town teams may decide they want to have subgroups on particular work. They may decide they want to make presentations to people. But uh, you're, you, that that is a really good question um, that that will be addressed as part of the setting of this up. How, how does this town team make sure that they are engaging? How do we make sure that... Uh, town team members are um, the champions and are out there talking about it and, and bringing views back and sharing views out. So um, I, th I think you make a good point, Councillor Chris, and that's definitely something we want we want to see happening. Thanks. Sir. Okay, Councillor Charlie McCoubrey, the leader of the cows. Again, yeah, thank you, Chair, for letting me speak. Um, I, I couldn't agree more with Joan. This is a really, really exciting piece of work. And I think there's a real opportunity here and a really good fit with the City of Culture. Um, I'll be seeking an urgent meeting with the new Minister for North Wales, Leslie Griffiths, because I think, you know, we're joking about Kimball Bay and Conway, but th this will not only be good for Conway, it'll be good for all of North Wales, given our central position within North Wales. But to move this forward, I think, to get the support within North Wales for this to be the bid going forward and then have a little grapple with whatever comes forward from South Wales, to have one Welsh bid going forward, which highlights the Welsh culture, the Welsh language, all we've got here, I think that 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 will give us the best opportunity to win that. And I think it's it's time it came to Wales. So um, I'm really, really supportive of it. I think this, this puts us in a really, really good position um, to try and fight for this. So I will do everything in my power to make that happen. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Leader. Uh, Councillor Anne McCaffrey. Thanks, Chair, for letting me speak. Um, Sarah, a great strategy, um, an exciting application. Um, but one comment I would just ask you to really think about is increasingly in the rump end of Conway West, as I tend to start calling now Capilillo, Pamamar, Clavachan, um, we don't seem to be connected. We're sort of feeling sort of fairly isolated and disenfranchised. And it's really interesting that only four towns are the cultural hubs, and yet we have more than four towns, and north, south, east, and west isn't necessarily covered by the four that you continually choose. And the same actually goes in terms of your city of culture application, it occurs to me. So, you know, my, my plea is to you is to rethink just how inclusive your hub and spoke approach actually is, because some hubs um, are, 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 not, are not necessarily reflective of the, the different part of the, of the 
the coastal area, which is sort of Conway West. And that's no disrespect to Conway. I mean, Conway ought to be a hub and, and completely understand that. So I would just ask you to consider that um, and perhaps maybe to, to give a bit of a response. I've already given this feedback, as you'll probably be aware, to Helen when she called at the uh, local area forum for, for Conway West. So that, that's a, a sort of comment I would make because certainly, you know, area towns, two towns, fairly large, like Pamamara in um, big amount of people live there um, and they've got some real unique identity and I think it tends to get overlooked really and the whole bit about accessibility and, and local and feeling enfranchised, not disenfranchised, I think should really be given a bit of sort of consideration. Um, and then the question I've got, um, Sarah, is about capacity building. Really good to hear that within your strategy, you're looking at capacity building. Um, and my question is, how are you going to ensure that the capacity building is not limited to the people who are already and the groups who are already connected? Because part of you know, what I'd like to see us doing is reaching out beyond the, the usual suspects, so to speak, because there's a lot of people out there, a lot of small groups who don't have the capacity and who are not particularly linked or networked to us. And it's about how do we outreach and make sure that we capture them within the work that we do. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Councillor Anne. Um, yeah, uh, and again, you know, there's there's so much going on in the county, isn't there? And there's a lot that that goes unnoticed, I think. Um, so whether that is um, a group of people meeting in a village hall to uh, to to undertake craft activities or a, or a local choir, there there is a lot going on, and we do need to make all of those connections. So that will definitely be part of the work we're undertaking uh, to uh, to consult through town and community councils, through a huge range of groups that we've we've already got that we're aware of, um, and um, and as we move forwards, once the uh, strategy is is confirmed after the after the consultation, um, that is going to be really important um, that we do make sure that that this reaches all parts of our county and that all those smaller groups feel that they're included and that they can benefit. And that will be something that the government will, the government group will look at. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why it's so important that this is a, a collective running this rather than it being a, uh, just a county council thing that is seen to be doing something to the community. It's got to be a collective group of people that are running it to make sure we don't miss those opportunities. But we'll absolutely note that down as, as part of the consultation feedback. Thank you. And any comments, Sarah, just on the point about there's only four towns that seem to feature? Yeah, uh, we, I'll, we'll, we'll take that back and, and have another look at that, Councillor Anne. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Councillor Philip Kappa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Sarah, for an excellent report, which I'm fully in support of. Um, we should be doing this sort of thing. It's playing to our strengths, and the issue of the um, city of culture will be an added cherry on the top of the cake, and we should pursue it to our, our maximum effort. Um, and I would be happy to propose that we accept the recommendations of this report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Phil Kappa. Do we have a second? I'll second it, Chair. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Councillor Bob Squire. So uh, we have a proposer and seconder. Uh, can, uh, sorry, Jane Richardson, you uh, wish to come in? Strategic Director for Economy in Place. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for, for letting me speak. And I just wanted to, to capture it. I'm, I'm so excited about this report. Um, the team have done so well, you know, to keep working on this all through the, the pandemic. Um, and a lot of people who were involved in, in producing this report were also delivering the community support service and other frontline services in the pandemic. So all credit to them for doing it. Um, I think what I'm really, really excited about is that um, as, as uh, Councillor Phil says, this is about playing to our strengths. We are such a culturally rich county. We have got so many assets in so many different forms. You know, we, we think of the obvious ones that are like, like our jewels in, in Conway, as Councillor Jones said, but, you know, some of our little Penma Museum or, you know, some of the, um, the, the, the kind of experiences that you have when you get out into the valley and, and, and they're, they're not perhaps on the, on the tourist trail in the same way, but um, are so much part of the tapestry of the culture here. And what I wanted to emphasize is that this is 
we're, we're doing this to celebrate and grow and enhance our culture. We're also going to use this to drive our regeneration. So this will be the, the strategy that we use to, to, to help our, our towns and, and, committee, and, and communities to recover from the economic impacts of COVID. Um, and in doing that, this has all come from being inspired by what happened in Hull. Hull actually won um, a Capital of Culture many, uh, some years ago, that some of you will recall, and um, they, they completely transformed their, the economic well-being of their city by focusing on culture, putting that front and centre, and that's what we're wanting to do here in, in, in this county. And so I suppose I wanted to, to draw on what Councillor Anne was saying and say that it's going to be part of a network of opportunities opportunities where we've got our strategy we, we know what we want to do and we, we, we've also got some opportunities through things like applying for capital of culture but also the leveling up funding community renewal funding and having this kind of web of linked opportunities where we invest in cultural experiences of all kinds to drive economic well-being and we are very very much looking um councillor Rand, at opportunities in the west in that context of the leveling up funding etc so we've very much got our sights set on it there are really good things we could do in that part of the county that, that we're eager to progress and i hope we can kind of develop those more and bring those into scrutiny for further exploration before too long. Great, thank you very much Jane. I don't have any other speakers and we have a proposal by Councillor Phil Kappa that, uh, oh, Councillor Geoffrey Corrie. I was just going to agree actually with what Anne, Councillor Anne said, um, that's how I read it, how, how she's saying it, but Jane has explained it very, very well. I would like to second the proposal. Thank you. Okay. It's already been seconded, Councillor Jeffrey, but, uh, but thanks. Oh, there you go. Got it again. <laughs> so, so it's been, been proposed by Councillor Philip Kappa and seconded by Councillor Bob Squires. Uh, the recommendation is on page 90 and that we, uh, the members consider the report, uh, which is creating a spark and a draft culture strategy for Conway Borough Council. Uh, 2021 to 2026 and give approval for it to go out to consultation and then members it's down to us to do our bit if everybody's happy could you please show by raising your uh, hand sorry oh. i'll have to do a roll call for this roll one call. if that's okay yeah sure okie dokie thank you members so please indicate if you're for against or abstaining councillor carol beard uh, for councillor philip kappa Enthusiastically for Councillor Jeff Corey, very much for Councillor Samantha Cotton, for Councillor Keith Eels, for Councillor Pat Hebron, yeah, very much for anything cultural is brilliant. Councillor Chris Hughes, Oblied, Councillor Gail Jones, for Councillor Abdul Khan. I think Councillor Khan's having network yeah. issues. So, Councillor Don Milne. For. Councillor John Roberts. For Blade. Councillor Harry Saville. For. Councillor Michael Smith. For. Councillor Nigel Smith. For Blade. Councillor Bob Squire. For Blade. Councillor Joan Vaughan. Most definitely for. Okay, thank you, members. Like, that's 15 in favour. That's carried. Thank you. That's been approved, members. And uh, thank you to the team of officers who worked really hard on this. It's very much appreciated by us all. We will now move on to the uh, next item, which is uh, item 10, which is consider a report by the Strategic Planning and Communities Manager, uh, James Harland, on the following matter, which is the 10.1, the Replacement Local Development Plan, or RLDP, Evidence-Based Conway Employment Land Review, or ELR, updated 2020, and they are on pages 115 to 234. Good evening, James. <laughs> Good evening, Nigel. Uh, I've seen, seen you a few times today. You uh, yeah. <laughs> You're doing well. Uh, yeah, thanks very much. Um, I'm going to pass you over, actually, to, to Lindsay, who's done a lot of hard work here on this. Both okay. of the reports we've got coming forward is the Employment Land Review. Um, you, you've seen this report before, um, but we were told by Welsh Government probably now 
uh, nine, ten months ago, that we must review the employment land review because of COVID uh, and understand what the impact that, that has on land and jobs numbers. So we've already brought this report to you previously to inform the LDP. So this, this report has implications on land for the next 15 years, but it only looks at business, uh, industrial and warehousing. Uh, it doesn't look at retail employment, uh, retail and uh, sorry, and tourism. They are separate elements that will come through the plan itself. So basically, this is just an update uh, looking at COVID, uh, but a lot of work's gone into it for Lindsay. So if, if, if it's OK, I'm going to pass you over to Lindsay just to take you through a few bullet points. Yes, please. And then any questions we can both we can go go through. So thank you. OK, thank you, James. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, as James was saying, a previous version of this report came to scrutiny a couple of years ago. And the reason why the ELR is back on the table is that it's been updated to take into account the most recent issues such as COVID-19, a revised population projections, Brexit and the North Wales growth deal. Uh, just to remind members that the Employment Land Review, or ELR for short, is the key evidence base for determining the amount of employment land needed in the LDP, as James was saying before. So by way of back background, and I'll refer to the uh, reports pack in a moment, the method used in the ELR is to look at different ways of forecasting jobs growth. For example, population change, labour market changes, employment land take-up rates and policy initiatives up to 2023. Uh, and once these forecasts are drawn up, the next step is to work out how much employment land is needed for each forecast. So if you look at page 221 of the reports pack, uh, you'll see there that there are seven job forecast scenarios with a range of between 40 to 20 hectares of employment land needed. Uh, you'll note that some of these scenarios actually predict negative net growth in jobs up to 2033. Uh, However, most do predict some degree of growth. And as officers, having looked carefully at the evidence, we believe that the positive growth option of 1,500 jobs, and that's scenario one modelled by Experian, which translates to 15.6 hectares is the most realistic option. Uh, and this is based on both advice contained within the ELR and our own officer assessment. Uh, by way of background, the Experian data is made up of sectoral jobs growth forecasts applied to the relevant sectors across Conway. Overall, this shows growth between 2018 uh, to 2020 pre-pandemic. Um, so, so yeah, growth with, within that time frame followed by a sharp decline in 2020, 2021, as the pandemic struck and has continued to affect us. Uh, and then a positive recovery to pre-pandemic conditions by about 2023. Uh, the recommendation in the ELR is that 15.6 hectares of employment land um, based on a 70-30 split in favour of industrial land to offices. Uh, this is to recognise the fact that there may be a reduced need for offices in the future considering a WG Welsh Government's aim for 30% home working. Um, so to remind members, the previous jobs growth figure in the RLDP preferred strategy was 1,800 jobs, so 1,800 jobs and 14 hectares of employment land. And that was on a split of 50-50 office uh, to industrial land. So in summary, uh, there's a projected reduction in jobs compared to the previous LDP figure of about 300. However, slightly more land, uh, 1.6 hectares will be needed. And this is due to the change in the type of land required. Uh, so those were the key points really that I wanted to go through. As James was saying, the report's been to committee before. I just wanted to flag what the key changes are tonight. It is a long report. I'm sure everyone's read it in detail, uh, but I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much for that. Um, members? Uh, Councillor Harry Savile's got his hand up first. Councillor Harry. Yeah, thanks, Chairman. Um, I don't think I was on this committee when the previous iteration of this report came here. Um, I was just having a look at paragraph 3.6, where it talks about the range of jobs growth predicted, and you've got the predictions from 2019 and then 2020. And it, it, the figures seem to wildly vary from one year to another. So the question I've got is if this is supposed to be predicting uh, the number of employment sites we're going to need up until 2023, how can we predict that 
with any kind of certainty. I, I know it would never be of 100% certainty, but how could we even hope to have a half reasonable prediction? Uh, yeah, I, I can come, up, come in on that. Thanks for the question. Um, yeah, it, it, you're absolutely right. It is very difficult to make such predictions. Uh, you know, these are unprecedented times. Um, however, we, it's something we have to grapple with within the LDP. And what the national guidance tells us is that we need to look at, at a range, which is what this paper puts forward. It puts forward a range of um, different scenarios and different growth levels. And we will have to make an assessment as to which one we think is the most likely. I mean, yeah, you know, there will be some scope for, for deviation within that. Um, but I think a lot of it comes down to the LD, LDP review mechanism as well. I don't know whether James wants to come in and, and discuss that. This current review we're doing at the moment um, obviously takes will take into account COVID, um, but there will be opportunities for reviews further on in the future before 2033. So it's not like we're, we're stuck with one forecast and then, you know, things change. There are opportunities to review further down the line. Okay. Yes. Yeah, if, if I could just add to Lindsay's, um, one of the key things is we, we provide quite a substantial level of contingency. So there's about 20% contingency there as well, Harry. So the level of land and requirement. So we look at those forecasts, we look at the market forecasts, and then we start to understand what that's going to predict. We need to make sure that there's flexibility there. So we monitor it over the, over the period every year. Um, and then we also make sure that contingency is in there as well to make sure we have sufficient land in there as well. Thanks. Yeah, interesting point, Harry. I mean, I was thinking myself, you know, in the last, well, it's got to be certainly within the last five years, uh, how things have changed. We've got, you know, local breweries popped up, local distilleries popped up, and now we've got this green agenda moving forward. Um, manufacturing, I think, we'll see coming back. Uh, so I just hope that uh, the 20% uh, that James has got on one side additionally um, will we'll see us through. Don't want to be running out of uh, running out of land, that's for sure. Yeah. Could, could I just come back in as well, just on that? Uh, the next yeah. item on the agenda will probably answer that question as well, Nigel, because it's about the flexibility and how we deal with that. So we look at market forces, we look at the uh, impact market analysis will have over time. We need to make sure in the plan that we can cope with all those demands. So we don't just stick to this 15.6 hectares requirement. We need to make sure that as an authority, we can help investment and we can help the market changes over time. So the next item on the paper, on, the, uh, on, this, on this agenda will kind of give you that response as well. This is just obviously about the need, yeah. um, not about the flexibility, how we deal with market changes. Okay then, well, we don't have any other speakers and the recommendation is uh, on page 152. Recommendations 2.1, the scrutiny committee notes the key findings of the recommendations of the ELR, updated 2020, and recognises the implications of the LDP growth options. And 2.2, the scrutiny committee recommends that cabinet approve the ELR, updated 2020, as part of the revised local development plan evidence base. Do we have a proposal and second of that? Councillor Harry and Councillor Geoffrey Corrie. Thank you very much. Uh, Jane, are you going to do a roll call? Yes, please, members. Uh, if you can state if you're in favour, against or abstaining. Councillor Carol Beard. Councillor Carol? She must have left the meeting. Are you there, Carol? She's froze. Okay. Uh, Councillor Phil Kappa? Oh. Councillor Jeff Corrie? In, in favour. Councillor Samantha Cotton? Four. Councillor Keith Eels? Four. Councillor Pat Hebron? Four. Councillor Chris Hughes? Oblige. Councillor Gail Jones? Four. Councillor Abdul Khan? No, he's gone. Councillor Don Milne? Four. Councillor John Roberts. Four Blade. Councillor Harry Savile. Four. Councillor Michael Smith. Four. Councillor Nigel Smith. Uh, Oblade. Councillor Bob Squire. Oblade. 
And I'll go back to Councillor Carol Beard. Are you back oh, with? Okay, yeah. lovely. Thank you very much, members. That's carried. Thank you. And that's been approved, members. Uh, and again, I'd like to thank the officers for the excellent report and the work that they do for us. Uh, we'll now move on to uh, item 10.2, which is a replacement local development plan RLDP evidence based background paper 56, the employment and land investment hierarchy. And that's on pages 235 to 250. Uh, James, are you presenting this one again? Yeah, I'm going to kind of introduce it and then pass okay. it to, to Lindsay for all the hard work she's done on it. All again, right. I, I mentioned before the last report that we have to set out what our needs are for land over the next 15 years. And I think members have already said that, you know, that land requirement could change over time. We need to make sure we have flexibility and we have options to make sure that investment in this in this county is, is retained, and we can and we can also uh, promote investment as well. So, what this paper does, it's it's a policy approach that we want to have in the LDP. It's not finalised yet. What we're trying to ask for members today is that you support the approach that we then apply to land requirements and the policy approach in the LDP as well. So the, the, the main point of the report is to make sure that if we have businesses in Conway who want different land options or different property options, we're there to support them in the policy and the planning process. We don't want those businesses to leave and go elsewhere and vice versa with uh, investment as well. So if someone outside of Conway wants to come here, we want to make sure that we're in a position in a planning terms to ensure that we have every single option for them, be it from land allocations, brownfield allocations to greenfield approach as well. Um, so this is what this paper promotes to ensure that in effect, we, we keep our jobs here, we keep the employment here. So Lindsay's done a lot of work around this. So if it's okay, I'll just pass it to Lindsay, just take you through a, a few elements and then any questions we can take as well. Okay, thank you, James. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, as James was saying, um, well, there's two main drivers for this, really. There's a need for a sequential approach as national planning guidance, um, especially recently with, you know, the town centre's first idea, brownfield land focus. But it's also equally important about how we can guide applicants and investors through this process in a way that's supportive and flexible to meet the needs of individual businesses. Um, this approach seeks to provide a framework for this and assist with the identification of suitable sites and premises for business uses. So the key thing is about how the planning process can support the economy and facilitate inward investment, startups or businesses looking to move to the county and within the county as well. So the idea is, is that there will be, once the RLDP is adopted, there'll be supplementary planning guidance which can be used for planning applications. Um, which will look similar to this background paper uh, once the RLDP is adopted. And that will be the guide which can help applicants and planning officers um, through the site selection process and steer them towards suitable sites. Uh, we've also, alongside this, we've developed a database of um, the employment land across Con Conway. Um, and what we're going to be doing, it's part of our LDP monitoring, but it's going to be a useful tool because it will uh, catalogue all the employment premises um, that we have in our, on, on, if you look at the proposals map, we've got areas hatched in purple and they're like our safeguarded sites, our allocated employment sites. So they're like the key employment sites within Conway. Um, and we, what the database will do is it will record what businesses are on there, what type of businesses there are, where there's vacant plots, where there's vacant um, allocations and where there are vacant premises. Um, so that will be useful up to a point. Obviously the snapshot will be taken every year because it's a year's monitoring, but that tool will be there for, you know, if people wanted to know if there was a plot available, for example, um, we will be able, that could be a starting point to investigate that. And certainly spare employment land, we'd be able to use, use the, the database. Um, so, yeah, looking at page 248 in the reports pack, um, that kind of highlights the, the process, really. It's not rocket science. The key principle is about looking at existing sites where, where we have them, existing premises, using those first, 
um, including town centres, because you know there's going to be an issue with town centres in uh, post COVID and vacancies, um, and where, where that's appropriate first, and then other brownfield land. So it's like a sequential approach, and then greenfield. Um, but what what we're trying to do is make sure that um, we're not saying no greenfield, no edge of centre. That those options are there for businesses, and it's just to guide them through that process in a clear way, really. Um, so today, it's just about discussing the principles of that. And you'll notice that after the flow chart, there is a draft policy, policy ED3. So today, it's not really about looking at the word, the exact wording of that policy, but it's about looking at the, you know, the thinking behind it and whether you agree with the approach. Because um, if so, we will then take that forward into the, the revised LDP. Obviously, that policy would come back for further discussion uh, later on uh, through the political process. But happy to take any further questions. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Um, members, Councillor Chris Hughes. Uh, thank you, Chair. And thank you, Lindsay, for it is an excellent report and it's really detailed. Um, my, my, one, my concern is that um, we talk about the hierarchy and we talk about using brownfields, land site and reusing buildings. But sadly, um, we... Uh, we don't always keep to that. That Conway has a quite appalling record of developing greenfield land ahead of uh, other sites. That having been so, how do we? Not that long ago, roughly two years ago, we declared um, a climate change emergency here in Conway. And in my view, one of the key elements around that is protecting greenfield land and protecting trees and the, the uh, green environment. I. I I'm not sure that this document is actually strong enough to do that because I do feel there should be a greater emphasis on the protection of green of green land. Okay, thanks for that, Councillor Chris. Um, yeah, I, I do totally hear what you're saying. You know, protecting greenfield land is extremely important, and I think it's very difficult because we have to strike a balance. Um, you know, in particular when it comes to employment land. Um, and it's, it's recognising that some businesses will need to be rurally located. Um, and one thing we're looking at is, you know, whether um, we can allow expansion, for example, in the open countryside. That will be something that we'll be looking at separately. But it is linked to this, this policy and this approach. Um, but, yeah, I, I think it's, it's about trying to guide applicants through the process, making sure they've, they've looked at those sites first and having the database and having that knowledge there, if you like, will help us to do that. Um, what part of this will be a submit a site facility, which is already um, up and running on our website, um, where developers can actually send us a site and they can get some advice beforehand, um, just in terms of how suitable the site is. So it's about engaging with them and making sure that, you know, they go through the process, but at the, at the same time, there might be some circumstances where we would allow an edge of, center, um, an edge of settlement site, only where it's appropriate though. Yeah, I, I can understand that. And I can understand from a planning perspective, you want that hierarchy. But, I'm, but as a Conway councillor, as someone who's looking at the, the expect, looking at the concerns that we've had as councillors and uh, the public in general across Wales and across the UK have about the climate change and the, the various concerns about that, I just wonder if we are going far enough I think that, um, you know, there are brownfield sites all over our towns and communities, yet often that people come along and say, oh, well, the cost of clearing the site would be too expensive. We'd rather develop a greenfield site. And I, I don't think, you know, those, those situations, cost can't, all, can't be um, the be all and an, an end all of everything. It has to be about looking at our communities in the round and looking at, the, the requirements, you know, we, we, we read a report recently that effectively said half of the North Wales coast, which would effectively mean the whole of land did know without protection would be underwater in um, 50 years, you know. Now, we, we've got to be conscious of that and understand the, the real concerns that are out there. Could I possibly just, just come in there, Nigel, if that's okay? Sure, you can, James, yeah. Right, thanks, Nigel. Uh, just to add to, uh, to Chris's um, comments as well, I think 
Yeah, if obviously this paper is about the hierarchy and about promoting sustainability. So yeah, it, it should be about looking at brownfield sites and look at those elements first. And that's what the process is about. We then would have allocations in the plan. What this is then doing is saying in policy terms, if, if that business cannot is not suited to that brownfield site or the allocation, then there are other options. And this will also go further with another report we're, coming, we're bringing forward probably in the next two months over affordable housing and how we promote affordable housing as well. But the, the other element is that we're producing a pathway to zero carbon. Mm. And some of the brownfield sites in particular are probably more of an issue in terms of impact on climate change than a greenfield site. I think this comes down to the, the policy approach for carbon zero and the pathway to carbon zero, especially towards 2050. So I think we've got the local area energy plan, which is coming forward, and we've also got the pathway to zero carbon in terms of new development and what they have to achieve. And what we're trying to do there is go over and above the minimum requirements to make sure they are promoting zero carbon. Um, so slightly separate to obviously what we're doing today, but I, 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 I do take your point that, yeah, greenfield land is not potentially the best option in terms of um, how we approach carbon zero, but we'll have separate policies and separate approaches for how developers deal with that. Okay, th thanks, James. And thanks, Lindsay. It was an excellent report. Thank you very much, Councillor Chris. Uh, Councillor Donald Mill. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I looked at this report and I found, to some extent, with a lot of concentration of its uh, I can't hear you, Councillor Don. Do you want to turn your video off? Okay. Try that. Okay. Yep. Thank that, you. That better. Is that clearer now? That's clearer. Thank you, Don. Okay, thanks. Um, yep. Are you okay, still there, Councillor Don? Yep. Uh, looking at the... I think we've lost him completely. No, no, it's, it's the carry on, Don. We okay. can hear you clear. Yep. yep. Okay, looking at the report... We've got a concentration, particularly, I think, on page 246, makes reference to the A55 corridor. Uh, I'm concerned that our policies may en encourage the development of the, of the existing areas without thinking about the broader area of our county. Um, as some of the areas in, in you know, the rural areas uh, probably need to uh, grow themselves if they are to be sustainable as modern villages as they are, we need to keep employment in those areas. And in particular, we need to look at the infrastructure. I know we're doing quite a bit about trying to encourage the uh, uh, introduction of uh, uh, fibre broadband and the like into those areas, which is absolutely vital if they are to survive. Uh, but I, I feel that this report doesn't fully address how we can improve the infrastructure that's needed to broaden out to all areas of the county to give job opportunities right across the county, particularly as many of them are quite clean, uh, you know, high tech type work and operations, which you know don't have the uh, impact on the environment that we might fear, and therefore we might concentrate into some of our existing uh, A55 towns. Okay, thank you for those comments, Councillor Don. Um, Lindsay, do you have any comments on, on Don's concerns? Uh, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, I think you're referring to the Conway commercial market analysis because I've, I've summarised that in the report and it does talk about hotspots um, being Mokhtra, Conway Morva, Quinton Hazel, for example. Um, but what, what I would like to say is that there will be a separate background paper. Um, I think historically we, we called it Brexit and the rural economy, um, which will be coming to, um, to members as part of the RLDP. So that will take into account, um, provide more of a focus, if you like, on the rural economy. Um, and we'll be drafting policies around that. Um, this, this approach here is not supposed to exclude the rural economy but by any means. Um, it's supposed to be kind of helpful towards it in a way by allowing the flexibility in villages, on the edge of villages, where it's appropriate in the open countryside for business expansion. Um, but yeah, I hear what you're saying. It, it's the evidence provided in the CMA look, did look at the hotspots because that's where the majority of the business is currently located. I think it's around 90 percent. 
Um, but yeah, we will look at it in more detail in, in the other background paper for specifically for rural economy. Thanks very much for your reassurance on that. I look forward to it. Thank you very much. Well, yeah, thank you for that, uh, Lindsay. Uh, for me, the draft policy ED3, it, it gives us flexibility and protects uh, the greenfield whilst, whilst allowing rural communities to develop if needed. So I think it addresses Chris's concerns as well as Don's. And in this modern world, we need to be flexible. Uh, we're not overly blessed with employment in, in North Wales and uh, particularly in Conway. And we need to be as flexible as we can to maintain businesses, to uh, bring businesses in and create employment for our young people. So uh, I, I thank you for the report. Um, the recommendations are on page 236. Uh, and the recommendations are 2.1, the scrutiny committee notes the contents of BP56, employment land investment hierarchy, recognizing the implications on the RLDP policy formulation. And 2.2, that the scrutiny committee recommends that cabinet approve BP56 and the proposed employment land investment hierarchy as part of the replacement local development plan, evidence-based. Do we have members who are willing to propose and second that recommendation? Councillor Geoffrey Corrie to I propose. I propose, is that a second? And, and Councillor Donna Mill to, to second. Jane, if you could do a roll call, please. Thank you. If you can state clearly if you're for, against, or abstaining. Councillor Carol Beard. I'm for. Councillor Philip Kappa. For. Councillor Jeff Corey. For. Councillor Samantha Cotton. For. Councillor Keith Eels. For. Councillor Pat Hebron. For. Councillor Chris Hughes. Oblige. Councillor Gail Jones. For. Councillor Don Donald Milne. For. Councillor Harry Savile. For. Councillor Michael Smith. Yeah. For. Councillor Nigel Smith. Obliged. Councillor Bob Squire. Obliged. <clears throat> Thank you, members. That's been carried. Thank you. That's been uh, accepted by the members and will be put forward to Cabinet. I want to thank the officers for the excellent report, uh, Lindsay, and members of the committee and non-members, Cabinet members, all for the attending this evening and uh, missing out on the football. So have a good evening, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the day. Take care. Yeah, Thanks, I've sure. just been told by my son I'm not allowed to watch the football anymore. Oh dear, Chris. It was nil-nil when I came upstairs and Wales won 2-0. <laughs> <You're not. laughs> Take care, Chris.